Hi, in this session I'm going to show you a brief introduction to Microsoft Visio Shapes and Connections. So let's say we have micro Microsoft Visio open. This is Visio 2010. And we're going to just use the basic flow chart. And I'm going to use U US units. I'm going to go ahead and double click that to open up the flow chart template. And in the flow chart template, usually you have your flow chart shapes, your process, your uh, data, decision, start and end. and to add shapes onto your sheet here, basically it's just drag and drop. So you can just drag that and drop it here. I can drag another one and drop it here. And of course, uh, if I can put, add a couple more to show some other things. So once I add this on here, what Visio does, in addition to the stencils that it has here, right now it's got the flowchart and it's got a cross-functional flowchart stencil. And basically, stencils are made up of shapes. If I went to the flowchart stencil here, you'll get some other shapes. But once you add a shape from the stencil, if you go into the document stencil, you'll notice that it's there. So basically, if you've got other type of stencils that are some things that are made up or customized, and you put it into your sheet, and the other party doesn't have that stencil, uh, you basically just tell them to go to the document stencil and has it in there for them. So in this case, if I went to my flowchart stencil, I put another stencil and another shape in here. Whoops, that's an off-page reference. I'm going to not use that one. Let me use the decision shape. You will notice if I went to my document stencil, it shows up here. The decision went here because I put it on there, and uh, it shows up. So that's the way to put shapes on there. Now, what if we wanted to connect them? And so that's the strength of Visio is connecting shapes. I'm going to another sheet here. Let's say that I put a shape here, and let me put those shapes. Let me put another shape here, and I want to sh connect them. So there's a couple ways that you can connect them. Uh, if you hover over the box or your your shape, this is my process shape, and if I just kind of click over here, if I just kind of hover over one of these arrows, it automatically, and click it, it automatically creates a connector line to it. Now I can put another box here, and one down here, and there's also a connector tool that lets you connect shapes together. So I can connect that shape to this shape. Now there is a difference between connectors. There is the concept of a point-to-point -point connection, and there's a shape-to-shape -shape connection. So when you use the uh, arrows here, the the, arrow, the triangles here to make a connection to another shape, that creates a shape-to-shape -shape connection. And if you're using the connector tool, you can make both a shape-to-shape -shape and a point-to-point -point connection. So the difference between those two is, you, if you notice on a shape-to-shape -shape, shape connection, Visio automatically determines where best to fit the connection line. So it moved from the bottom here, over here, over to the side here. So if I move the shape around, it kind of follows it around and guesses the best fit, the best uh, allocation of that line to the shape. You can see that the, the line, starting line here, it's kind of moved from down here to up there. Let me go ahead and uh, put this back here. Now with a point-to-point -point connection, that that particular connector is stuck to that top point here. So if I move this around here, you'll notice that it still stays there. But this was a shape-to-shape -shape connection. Let me go ahead and give you an example of a full point-to-point -point connection. I'm going to move it out here and then drag it and put it over to the connection point here. So it glues on to that connection point. So if I moved it over here, you'll notice that it stayed there. If I moved it over here, you'll notice that it stayed there and that stayed in the top. So that is a point-to-point -point connection. So there's reasons to use point-to-point -point connections over shape-to-shape. -shape. For the most part, uh, you might want to consider shape-to-shape -shape you, you, if you want Visio to make it easier for you to kind of make its best guess in terms of allocating the connectors at the most appropriate place. But if you wanted to have a your your permanent connector on the maybe like here on the right side, you don't you always want to have that one there. Uh, you may want to do a point to point connection, and this may be uh, important when you're talking about maybe swim lanes or a flow where this is should be on the far left, and you don't want something where when you move a shape around that arrow kind of just moves around to a different place that starting point of that connector so you don't want to do that so that's the difference between a point to point and a shape to shape so as with the connector as I mentioned before with the connector you can let me go ahead and put a process another process box here so and 
Let me go and delete that. Go back to my pointer tool and delete that. So with the pointer, you can either make a point-to-point. -point, see, I, I, I hover over that point and make a point-to-point, -point, or you can make a shape-to-shape. -shape. So with create a shape to shape connection you just kind of hover over the shape itself you see the red lines guide over the shape and instead of going to the point here you go into the center and that becomes a shape to shape connection so those are connections so let's go into uh, another example of um, some connections and shapes so let's say that I build out a little let me go ahead and build out a, sh a flow here let me go ahead and build another one here oops let me go ahead and delete that. It's always good to go back to the pointer tool if you don't want to have any errant or kind of mistaken type of things show up uh, as you're creating your, your flows. So let me go ahead and create another shape here. And let's see, let me go ahead and get a decision. And maybe I'll create another shape here. Whoops, uh, control Z to undo. Let me, I don't want to select that one. Let me go ahead and Create another shape up here and create another shape down. Oops, un control Z to undo. Let me, let me go ahead and create another shape down here. All right. And let's say that uh, let me go ahead and just make my shape to shape connections. Whoops. I'll take care of that later. And make that one down there. And let me go ahead and just draw this one. Put this one as a shape to shape connection here, and this one, I believe this one is already a shape to shape connection there. So, the, going back, there's also a way to determine if there's a shape to shape or point to point connection. You notice that the, the boxes here are different. You've got a box and the red box in, inside. So, if we move that out and we just made a point connection, you see that it's a solid box here. Rather, if we move it out and put it in here, it becomes a solid box within kind of a, with a little white border. So that's one way to also identify whether it's a point to point or shape to shape. So in this case, this example I want to show is what if you wanted to like insert a box in here, in between here. Sometimes uh, you, you may have been more inclined to just select this whole shape, maybe select this whole area, kind of move it, move it to the side here and select on this, delete it, go ahead and maybe bring another box from here over into here and then make another point to point connection here and then another one here well you don't really need to do that actually that that's just uh, one way to do it and it's a little bit of a longer way there's another way to do it let me go ahead and undo those things there I think I can go there and that will undo it so what you can do is actually we can move this a little bit select all of that becomes a four-sided arrow here, move it a little bit and then just bring a shape in here. And So what happens when we bring a shape and drop it over the line is Excel is really nice and it creates a, another connection. So this is basically a shape-to-shape -shape connection. So if I move this around you see that it moves it accordingly, we kind of adjust it there. So that's one way to do it if you wanted to add shapes in between other shapes. That's just kind of a neat shortcut instead of uh, moving a large shape around, cutting or deleting the arrows or the connectors and adding another shape. That's one way that we can add a shape in between some shapes if we want to make some edits. Now let's go into copying shapes. If you noticed earlier that I was copying shapes, it looked like I just hovered over a shape and another shape appeared. So there's ways that you can put shapes. If you already got shapes in your sheet, there's ways that you can put the sheet in. You can put it in through your document stencil, or if you go back to your flow chart, you can put it in. Or if you already have the shape that you want on the on your sheet here, all you have to do is press the control key. Well, there's another way that you can do it. You can press control C to copy and then control V to paste, and that's going to paste it. But I kind of paste it anywhere. Uh, it kind of is determined by um, Visio. And basically what it does is it tries to put, make a best guess of where to put it. So if I, press, if I selected this particular shape, press Control C and Control V again, it's going to paste it uh, where it best sees it. There's one way you can do it if you just wanted to have a little shortcut and copy a shape onto an area into your worksheet and have it into the area automatically or define it, not just do a copy and paste. So basically what you can do is you can press Control 
and the left, the left mouse click and just drag it and it's going to make a duplicate of that shape. So very similar to Control C and Control V, basically it's going to duplicate that shape. So as that is, again, you just press Control and then left mouse click and just drag a shape wherever you want it and it's going to make a duplicate of that shape. So that's much better than Control C to copy, Control V to paste, or just going back here to the stencils and bringing your shapes over. So there's another tip I want to give you, and this is in regards to the connection points. And let's just stay on this sheet, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, zoom in to this particular shape. So you notice if I click on the shape, there's a couple connection points. So these are the connection points that are available to you when you want to connect shapes together. Uh, let's say that you don't, you want more than that. Let me go in and click on our little connection point tool. You can see here it's got four, actually it didn't have those other ones. These are the four connection points that we have, top, bottom, uh, sides, and the sides. And let's say you don't want them on th these areas. You wanted them in the corners. You can actually move these connection points. If I s click on that connection point, it kind of turns a, a violet magenta color. I can actually move that to the corner. And I can move this to the corner. And I can move this to the corner and that to the corner. So basically now my connectors are at the corners. If I also want additional connectors, I can actually just press the control key and if I want it in the center, I'll put one in the center. That's inside the shape. If I want it on the outside, I can even put it on the outside and these will all be connected to this particular shape. So let me go ahead and uh, go back to fit this into the current window. Now let's say I go, go into my pointer tool and let me move this over here and let me go ahead and zoom in. I'm just To zoom in, I can just press shift, control, control shift, and then it turns into a magnifying glass and I can just drag this area and it will zoom into that area. Let's say I want to make my connections to this box here now with all the other different connection points. So if I go in here, so I don't want to do a shape to shape, but I want to do a maybe a shape to point. I can go up here, I can make another, let me go bring this one over. I can make this one go over to the center here. Let me go and scroll back out. Let me go ahead and uh, zoom back out. And you've noticed that if I move this, oops, let me go ahead and click the pointer tool. You'll notice if I move this out here, it has moved along. See that 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 particular that particular connection point outside the square, it's stayed there. And this one inside the square, it's stayed there too. So that's another tip if you want to have additional connecting points or kind of non conventional connection points, you can actually create those for your shapes. So the last step I want to give you is in regards to the guides. So let's say that we have a couple shapes here and we want, we're, we're creating our shapes. Let me do a control, control and then drag this out to duplicate this. Let me, let me drag this out to duplicate this. Let's say you're creating a, a bunch of um, shapes and they're kind of all over the place uh, and you want to kind of line them up what you can do is you can have guides that help line them up. So in order to have the guides that li line them up, you should go into the view and make sure that you've got your, your guides available. Now, if I go to the ruler up here and kind of drag it down here, this is a guide. These don't get printed out unless you uh, define them to be printed out, but by default they don't. So if you go ahead and move the shape and kind of lock it into the guide, let me lock these into the guide, you can actually just then move the guide and it will move all those shapes at once instead of you having to select the shapes and trying to line them all, up all together and then move them. If you snap them, snap them into the guide and move the guide around, it makes it easier for you to move your shapes around. So if you didn't want it to line up your shapes to the, to the edge, you can also line them up into the center. You see that now it's going into the center here and that's just another way you can do it. And if I move my guide, then I'll move with it. So this is useful if you're creating swim lanes, uh, swim lane diagrams, swim flows. And so uh, you can create your shapes all around. And if you have your swim lane, that uh, a horizontal based swim lane, you can create all your shapes here and make them all kind of align together in the line and move them around where you needed them to be. So there's a brief introduction, some tips and tricks on shapes and connectors. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.